Well, good morning, everyone. It's time for Sunday morning recap in Acts chapter number four, chapter number nine, chapter number 11. We won't turn to all those verses, but uh, here's something that we want to remember from yesterday uh, at the Trinity Baptist Church. We were studying the life of Barnabas, and really this is what we can take away from this. We should all strive to be like Barnabas. We should strive to be like him. And uh, yesterday we took some time uh, to look at uh, an early church believer named Barnabas introduced to us in, in Acts chapter number four, uh, verses 36 and 37. There's something really special in these verses. These are the ones we're going to read. And so let me read those two verses to you and they'll uh, share with you just a little bit about him. It says this, it says, And Joseph, who by the apostles was surnamed Barnabas, which is being interpreted the son of consolation, a Levite and of the country of Cyprus, having land sold it and brought it to the disciples uh, and laid it at the apostles feet. And so we have this, this simple little statement about Barnabas. And, and listen, um, this is a person who saw need and assessed his own resources and then sold land to help with that need. Now, something I want to point out to you is that we think of Barnabas. Barnabas is a nickname. It's a a name that that really the apostles gave to him that was about his character, his demeanor, his spirit. And so it says that his name is Joseph, and, and, and some might interpret that as Joseph, but the apostles saw him as a Barnabas. And, and so they gave him that name because it really... It, it really matched his character. He saw needs and his heart of compassion was moved and, and he sold land and he gave it. But if we were to fast forward to chapter number nine, uh, verses 26 and 27, I think that you're gonna find something really special here also because there was this guy who uh, was just converted to Christianity named Saul who was a persecutor of believers and, and the church was afraid of him. They didn't want anything to do with him. They weren't sure he was a genuine convert. And so they wouldn't let him be a part of the church until Barnabas vouched for him. Barnabas comes forward uh, and, and says, hey, look, I've I've heard the stories about Saul, the, confer the converted Saul. I've heard the stories that he confessed Christ as his savior and that he immediately began to preach Christ in the synagogues in Damascus. And so as he's coming to try to join us, he is actually now one of us. In fact, verse number 26 uh, says this, it says, um, uh, and when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself uh, to the to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple, but Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles and declared unto him uh, how he had had seen the Lord Jesus on the way and had spoke and he had spoken to him and how that he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. And so we see here that the Barnabas was was right in vouching for Jesus for for Saul because Saul really had met Jesus. Listen. Barnabas continues to grow and, it, and is thought of as someone who can be trusted when there's a, a, a new ministry beginning in Antioch. The, who's the first person they send? Let's send Barnabas. Barnabas is a great guy. He'll assess the situation and we'll get an honest answer from him about what's going on. And, and while he's there, he remembers Saul. And instead of taking the ministry and making it his own, he goes and gets Saul. And Saul helps him and Christianity is put on the map in Antioch. In fact, in chapter 11, uh, verse number 26, it says that Christianity, the believers were called Christians first in Antioch after that incredible year's worth of work there that Barnabas brought Saul into. And so the, the, the statement I was making to our church family yesterday is we can use more Barnabases at the journey. We can use more Barnabases in every church. Our world needs more Barnabas-like people that are compassionate. They see the potential in people. And not only do they see the potential, but they include those people. They invite those people. They, they vouch for those people. And then they go serve the Lord with those people investing in them. And that's what our church really needs. We've got a lot of people that are investing in themselves, investing in their future here, but not investing in people for the kingdom of God. And so I wanna encourage you with this, invest in people for the kingdom of God. Be a Barnabas. Hope that helps. Enjoy a great day.